as everyone knows, any proper born man does not know how to read. That being said, I am not a proper born man. Not only do I know how to read, I'm going to teach you how to read. But before we get into it, it's really important to remember. Do not tell the church! In all seriousness though, over the last couple months, I have been really invested in learning how to read Alethi so that when Stormlight 5 comes out, I would be able to read any of the Alethi that is on the page and not have to wait for the translations. And with Stormlight 5 about to come out here in a couple days, as of me recording this video, I was sitting there and I was like, if I want to read Alethi, they want to read Alethi. So here is your quick how-to guide on how to read and write Alethi. One of the most important pieces of information that you need to know is symmetry. To the Alethi people, symmetry is holy, and you can see that represented in their writing. All of the symbols, which I'm going to show you here in a minute, follow some sort of pattern. Truths. Not only that, but something I absolutely adore about this writing system is that when Brandon Sanderson and whoever he hired to help him work on this, I apologize, I can't remember his name, I know it starts with a J, forgive me. When they were developing this writing system, they specifically set out to make something that looked like waveforms, which I adore. That fact alone has made Alethi one of my favorite writing systems, I think, of any fantasy universe. With Alethi, all of their letters fall into five sets of five. There is the T set, the S set, the P set, the K set, the E set, or the vowels. Same thing. And each of these sets follow the exact same pattern. Lies. Also, I apologize for my handwriting. This would look much nicer if literally anyone else was writing it. So, for my example, I've written out the T set, which is T, D, R, T, H, and L. Now, as you can see, all of them are the same symbol. Mostly, if I could draw nice. Your first letter is going to be a full version of this symbol. Your second letter is going to be two-thirds. Your third letter is going to be one-third. Your fourth letter is going to be two-thirds again with two small slashes on the back. And your fifth letter is going to be one-third, one small slash. And every single set follows this exact same pattern. So, for an example, this is the P set. P, B, M, P, H, V follows the exact same pattern. Shalon. Full. Two thirds. One third. Two thirds, two slashes. One third, one slash. I have written out every symbol for each set. As we've already seen, there's the T set, the P set. Then the S set is just the T set in reverse. We've got our K set and our E or vowel set. E is the easiest, E is my favorite. Now, what I will say, in the work that I've done in translating some of the older books, I really have struggled with T and S. My go-to on how to remember is the T set ends with L, and its dot, or its point, is pointing to the left. That seems to have helped me out a lot, but you may need to come up with your own way to remember the sets. So here, I have written out all of the sets. For the S set, we have S, Z, N, S, H, or SH, H. T set, T, D, R, T, H, or THE, L, P set, P, B, M, F, V, or P, H, sorry, K, K set, K, G, Y, K, C, H, CH, and J, and then our E set, E, A, O, U, I. Now, what do you notice about most of these sets? That fourth symbol, excluding the vowel set, is your ch, th, sh, f sounds. I hope that picked up, okay. These are your fourth symbol. This is the two-thirds with two slashes symbol. Remember what I said about symmetry and patterns. Now, I'd like to take a second and talk about the vowel set. So, E-A-O-U-I, but something really important and something that again has really thrown me off when translating the Stormlight novels is you. You can also be W. So one of the most famous lines, Seth Sun Sun Volano wore white to kill a king. I hope I'm remembering that correctly. If it's a little off, I apologize. War white. You have no idea how much I struggled 
translating that sentence when I had it written out back to English because my brain just was not processing U-O-R-E and I should have known and I felt like a big fool. So just a reminder, you can represent W. Okay, real quick before we move on, I've actually shown you the whole sets of the other three, so I'm just gonna go over the last two real quick. The S set, like I said, just a reminder, is just the T set reversed. S, Z, N, S, H, or SH, and H. Then we have our K set. K is what I would say the hardest, at least for me personally, to write, but it is the most visually distinct, and so I would say it's been the easiest to actually read. K, G, Y, C, H, or CH, and J. Okay, I've made this one very large. You've seen me write this symbol a few times throughout this video. This is the symbol that dictates the start of a sentence. You've got essentially an I with a slice, slash through the middle, and sometimes you will see this little like slope going up to the top of the I. This isn't always there, but it's often there, if that makes sense. Now, let's talk about sentence structure. Just like in English, you will find spaces between the words. That being said, in some of the Stormlight accompanying art, there's not always a space, or sometimes the words are so close together that it's hard to tell that there's a space. That has also thrown me off. So in cases like that, you'll run into something that looks like this, where clearly you have a word here and a word here. The lines are still connected, but there's just a little bit of space between them. Just something to keep an eye on as you start translating. Now, really quick, it should also be noted that Questions will end with the H-A symbol, which I find hilarious because when I think about it, I'm like, every time I read a sentence, I think about it in the sense of, do you think this is a good idea? Huh? Hmm? I don't know. I just think it's funny. Now, that being said, in one of the Stormlight books, I can't remember which one, there is an actual question mark that we see within the novel. If I remember correctly, the person that actually wrote that question mark was not from Roshar, or is at least not a Lethe, which will account for the differences there. Also, it's important to keep in mind there are several substitutions. So there's no X, so you would use KS. There's no F, obviously that's going to be PH. C is going to be K or S, depending on the word. Sorry, I have Y on my mind. I will get to that in just a second. W, like I mentioned earlier, is going to be U. I also think that there could be an argument that Z could be used in replace of several X words. For example, the word xylophone. If we were tr to write that in a lethe, I personally believe you'd use a Z instead of a KS, but that's just a personal thing. Also, I'm pretty sure the lethe don't have xylophones. Prove me wrong in the comments. But just as an example of all that, Here's how you would write the word fox. Now I'm going to stir up the pot a little bit because I can. Yasna Kolin. In Rhythm of War, we do get a canonical writing of her name by none other than Novani Kolin, her mama. I am not going to be showing the exact page because I know for a fact that I have followers who are reading Stormlight who are not on Rhythm of War quite yet, so I don't want to spoil anything. It's kind of a big one. But we have it written with the J, not the Y symbol. To be fair, here's our Y symbol. It is literally exactly the same, minus the little slash at the end. It could have been a mistake. Also, her name in English is spelled with a J, right? So there's been the debate on if it's Yasna or Jasna. And honestly, I wish I could definitively tell you which one is correct, but I just can't because in modern Alethi, the J is mostly pronounced with the Y sound, mostly. For example, Jim. Jim is spelled with a J, not with a G, because it has the J sound. Counterpoint, maybe it's pronounced yem, specifically uh, yem or yem heart, but I can't say for sure. Again, it's that whole mostly pronounced by a Y thing that kind of throws me off. Also, I really do think 
that if J is never pronounced with the J sound, it creates a redundancy within the writing structure, a redundancy that could be filled with the W. As I mentioned, Zeth Sun Zun Velono, Velano wore white, it's the U symbol. But if we have a Y symbol and a J symbol to make the Y sound, and we have a J and an I to make the I sound, Editor Elijah here, I meant to say, then there's no reason to have Y. It just feels a little redundant. And again, just to finalize, if the J never makes a J sound, I think it would have been much smarter to just completely get rid of J, have Y represent that Y sound, making Y the E sound, and then bring W in. But that's just a personal thing. Bringing that back to Yasna, I was a staunch, it's pronounced Yasna believer. This one little symbol here kind of starting to make me think it might be Jasna and that the physical readers might be right. But at the end of the day, I am pretty sure Brandy Sandy has said, don't worry about it, has said that it is pronounced with the Y sound. So it is Yasna. But I do think this right here creates an interesting debate. Now, before we end this video, I am gonna switch perspectives just so I can give you guys some tips and tricks on how to quickly learn how to read and write Alethi. Here's kind of what I do to actually memorize these sets. You can see right here, I've mentioned multiple times about making mistakes in translating. I wrote tomorrow. I don't know what, it's tomorrow and yesterday. I can't remember exactly what I was translating, but you're gonna make mistakes and that's gonna be okay. So what I've been doing is writing out, one, two, three, four, five, this isn't even the right page. Okay, sorry, this is the correct page. I like to write out each set six times. P, B, M, P, H, V, K, G, Y, C, H, J, T, D, R, T, H, L, S, N, S, Z, N, S, H, H, E, A, O, U, I, and then draw that symbol that each set is attached to. Then what I like to do when I have the phi or the six, that makes a perfect format for your writing. Now, again, it should be stated that Alethi is not written in notebook paper like how we have here. It is written just on blank paper, but lined notebook paper is a fantastic way to start learning how to read Alethi and write it also. So we, with our six lines, we have six spaces. We can cut that right down the middle. Your first symbol is going to be exactly one, two, three, four, five, six spaces. Your second symbol will be four. Your third symbol is going to be two. Then your fourth symbol, again, will be four. Half of one, these slashes will make technically one space, but they're right in the middle, so it doesn't fit. And then two spaces, half or one. And then, again, same thing. That applies to every single set, P set, T set, S set, K set, E set. But yes, this is by far the best way to memorize your sets, memorize the symbols, and prepare yourself for Stormlight 5. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. If I made any mistakes, feel free to let me know in the comments. I feel very comfortable with reading and writing Alethi, but I am not a master. I am still learning as well. But I really do hope this video was able to help you and prepare you for Stormlight 5. And I can't wait to actually get to talk about that novel with all of you. That's all for today. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Mother Goose out. Yeah.